Google was select his name of June 23rd, 2019. Would you like to pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all? I would like to entertain a motion to approve the following. 2719 $35,297.06. Approve a payroll warrant for $1,598,027. Approve a payroll warrant for six thirty nine nineteen of Two million. Two hundred thousand. Two hundred. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. So, so the one above is one hundred and five thousand three hundred. Oh, I'm sorry. So sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. And two thousand twenty eighty hundred ninety eight dollars and twenty seven cents. Uh, and for seven eleven nineteen for three hundred eighty four thousand five hundred sixty three dollars and seventy cents. Another payroll warrant for seven seventeen. 19 for 59,491,026. Approved payroll warrant for 71819 for $858.24. And approved an expense warrant for 52019, which is a cleanup, for $1,359,511.99. And what that this one is for the transaction associated with the interest on the bond of the police station. Motion to approve, or a motion to approve the signing of warrants. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then we have to approve Sullivan's minutes of 6419. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Acknowledge minutes and reports for other departments, ZBA. 52819 and the Grand Library Report for June 2019. Motion to acknowledge. Second. All in favor? Aye. The Brookfield Ecumenical Food Pantry is accepting donations at the Mayor Public Library whenever the library is open or at St. Mary's Church at 4 Howard Street during distribution hours, Wednesday 9.30 to 11 a.m. and Saturday 9.30 to 11 a.m. Senator Gobi's aid will hold office hours in Brookfield Town Hall from 2 o'clock p.m. to 3 p.m. on Wednesday, August 7th. Does anyone else have any announcements for anything? Just related to Lucas, just quickly, that I did speak to him at a uh, elderly affairs meeting up in North Brookfield where he has not, he's been struggling with mascot relative to the, the uh, legal expenses the town incurred relative to White's Landing. And, not thinking that we're going to be successful, but at least we're trying, and, and what hopefully will come out of this, if nothing else, is that there needs to be a change in practice between MassDOT and communities so that towns like Brookfield don't get stuck in the future. So that that's, if I hope for one thing, it would be, again, a change in practice so, so that we just don't get stuck. So I'll, I'll actually be meeting with them on the set. Yeah, do you have anything? Uh, I don't have anything to add, no. The first one here is to sign an engineering service contract for saw Dam. Motion to sign. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, pulling it out, it's a mandatory thing that we have to do, so there's not a lot of choice in the matter. Okay. Yeah, it was an article. 
It was an article. Okay. Yeah. Yes. That's correct. That's the one that was sent. Yes. Our next one is to sign the Common Street Lease Amendment. Motion to sign. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And this will fall signed by um, the trustees, trustees and the helps. All right, we just need to get a copy back of KP.
would Scott Grant was on the earlier agenda and Cindy asked me to take it off and then I'll talk about it and I'll talk about it. Right, and I want to explain that too. So when we get to other, we'll talk about that as well. program from our website so that if people were interested in participating they can. Executive Director, and um, the number is 413-781-6045. 
Great. And it is a program. She signs, I have to sign here. Yep. September 10th and the 24th. Do I have a motion? Oh, your motion to set those days. Uh, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, if we need something, we yeah, certainly need something. And also, that's good because we go on vacations. Not even now. This is nothing about it. Yeah. Okay, well, next one will go on to other. So the first opportunity is there is an action that presently going on to, uh, for a lift uh, for trucks and the, and the like. It would be something where it would be cost effective if the highway department for the maintenance of the trucks did have a lift uh, that we could do more of the work in, in house. The importance of this thing is it's a, sick, a brand new lifter of this magnitude and it's being put on um, by MassDOT, it's used equipment by MassDOT. Brand new would be $60,000. For $10,000 or less, we could pick this thing up and have it available to the town where there are monies within the highway budget that uh, can cover the expenses of receiving it and getting it uh, installed and usable uh, for $10,000 or less. What I would recommend is a motion that suggests that the highway superintendent inspect the uh, equipment. Uh, it would happen tomorrow because of the auction timing. And that with, it, with his uh, agreement that it is something that we could take advantage of, uh, such that it is, that we would proceed to secure uh, for the benefit of the town. Okay, Qu quick question. Were we talking about doing this out of there? Expense budget, or are we talking about using? Do we have any funds in the repair replacement account for that was in, originally intended for used equipment? That, I mean, I, would, I, I don't. Cindy said that there was money in that account, and I didn't ask which account. Okay. But, but it could go either okay. way. Because I'm willing. I mean, I'm willing to authorize it out of the repair replace account yeah. If, yeah, if, if that's considered an appropriate use for that money. And then. We could tag that on to, to the motion. Yeah. As far as where the a, funds would Because it's equipped, because it is equipment, even yeah. though it's not yeah. necessarily. Come out of there and start coming out of the operating budget. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I, again, you and Ryan can go look at it and see okay. where, where it goes. And if it's, it still makes sense, then. Can uh, we shoot a note to Lori and find out what the balance is in that account? That'd be great. Yeah. All right. The motion to move forward to investigate and uh, secure it if possible, if Ryan deems it uh, useful. I'll second that. And also, to come out of the uh, yes. fleet repair replacement account, if the funding's available from that location. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's the, that was the first thing on my list. <laughs> Second. Second thing on my list is there, there was an earlier um, uh, item on the agenda relative to Rice Corner and Gay Drainage and the step grant, which we will not be going forward. And so, if anybody is concerned about it, they can blame me because what I wanted to make sure we were doing when and if we got to the Rice Corner situation that we corrected everything. 
from there downstream. And the importance of that is that we know that there are issues behind the three homes on the west corner. It needs to get fixed. Ryan has a way that possibly we, we don't be, need to be blowing up ledge or anything like that. And we need to work through with the homeowners the idea that the town could pass over their property and that the town, they would, the owners would approve that. Approve an easement of some sort. And, and that it's an easement of a sort. And that with that, that piping would then start downhill towards Gay Road. Mm -hmm. The thing that's changed about going this year versus next year is there needs to be an engineering study, which probably will come out of the highway department's budget, where the culvert at Ken Grimes' house is undersized, and it's been backing up into the wetlands mm -hmm. that are there. Okay. So we have the guy that's the responsible for ecological restoration from Department of Energy and Environment. Here, he came, he inspected, and he said that culvert's undersized. So we need to do an engineering study to say that that culvert it needs to be replaced and with a larger size. What that does is that whole roadway, if you're familiar with the Teff's house, you go down a very steep little bank to Grimes' house, and then you go uphill. Yeah. What, what happens is that road, that whole roadway in those area of those three homes are, is actually needing to be elevated. And again, Ken Grimes remembers when they were kids that he actually ran, and you can imagine that's 80 years ago, right? <laughs> that he actually, the culvert that was there originally, he and, he and his buddies used to run through the culvert. That's how tall it was. That's how it tall was, it, was. it was. So we know at some point we reduced the size of the culvert, yeah. and, and it's only 48 inches today, which is it, yeah, and why it's 60, backing up in the wetlands. Yeah. So now we'll do, Brian will work with the owners on Rice Corner, Sorry for you know a delay with them to move forward, but at least we'll have a, a plan, an engineer plan for that piece. We'll have an engineer plan for the gay road piece, and then what happens is you're now going downstream to Rice Corner Cross, where we already know that that culvert at one point is going to be replaced as well. So rather than having things done piecemeal, and hopefully with this we'll have a, a, a good study of all three Copy places, so that it all comes together. When it's fixed, it's going to be fixed rather than piecemeal. Makes so perfect sense. That's that one. And then, uh, just FYI, um, you're familiar with me going to elderly housing meetings and the like. Yes. And I went to a meeting the other day. And interestingly enough, as a follow up of that meeting, uh, this is that particular meeting was related to age friendly and dementia friendly town and how, how we could be doing some things. We are doing some things between the churches and the like. Um, so, but the good news is, after I came from that meeting, I got a telephone call. As you were, uh, probably remember, I was talking about trying to find 10 acres for um, housing to see if that's possible. And what I was encouraged to do was to, if you could ever find 10 acres on the bus route, that it would be looked upon favorable. So, as I am doing this, I am doing that as a chairperson of the Brookfield Congregational Church. I am not doing it as a, a select member. Should there be interactions with this going forward, if it goes forward, who knows? If it were to go forward, I would re refuse myself from town-related activity to focus on a faith-based organization pursuing elderly housing. So that's what we, we, we stand on. Let's, let's cross our fingers. And then I would only ask one question if you you had a meeting today, a finance meeting today, yeah. just to, is there anything that we should know about? Uh, well, I was going to write up something and send it to Karen and you, but we have a very good financial meeting about different things. Uh, one of the things Laurie had said was that the Department of Revenue has given her until September to close 18 now. And she feels good about it. Yeah, she feels good. good about that. And then also she's try to get everything done by the end of November so that she can get a stable day and balance sheet for that. Okay. So then that would then put the audit activity into next year? No, she's saying the audit probably would be happening until the spring. Okay, so a little later. Yeah, a little into the spring. And uh, they're hoping that Tom Stanley will come down here and do the audit. Perfect. And then she's changing. She sent out today. Um, she's, she went, we're going to have new um, payroll sheets putting out and also she's going to have um, new um, expense vouchers too. So is Karen going to maintain the original document, the 
Satisfactory. Yeah, well, they might look around and see if they can find some more. But if not, I think we probably should get in touch with him and ask him, you know, where's the rest of it? Well, yeah, they should, they should get the, the supporting documentation. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. They're on it, though. They're, they're working the problem. 
So everybody got along fine today, you know, everything's gonna, everything's gonna come to a, you know, come to a head, we're gonna get everything straightened out, get back on the straight and narrow again. Sure. We're trying to head a report today of some back taxes that are going to mention back taxes that are going to be paid not very soon, so all positive. Oh, and then another thing, um, I don't know if I mentioned it to you at the last meeting or not yet. Brenda and I, when you had gotten your member, she gave you uh, the uh, tax lien. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, some of the properties showed that they owed a lot, a lot of taxes on them, but the properties actually aren't even worth that kind of money, you know. Oh, so that's value than what is owed in taxes. And that's why I asked what I'm, you know, I appreciate the fact that they printed the report out of VADAR, but what we really need is to understand a true report from probably the treasurer's office. Uh, be, or Did she get you one? No, the only information was two. We got two copies. It looked like Brenda had provided one and the treasurer's office had provided the other, but they were identical reports printed out of the same section of VADAR. Okay. Because okay. I and, knew that she had said she, she uh, Right. A absolutely. And, and I, I don't have an issue with what was provided mm -hmm. in and of itself, but what my question was at the previous meeting was, can we get a, a report where, whether in part we may need to get some of the information either from the treasurer's office or from Copelman and Page to find out, okay, of these properties, which ones are actually in Landport? Um, well, you know, and, and, and that sort of thing, so that we could get a true like plan together. And, and I guess the question would be: Is normally that planning responsibility resides with the treasurer's office? Are they in a position to take that on? If they're not, what sort of support would they need? would they need in order to put a plan together and the, to delineate, kind of like when when Keith did it for us, where he showed, okay, this one's in land court, this one's here, this one's there, this is a low value property, so so that we at least have a concept of what's the plan. So to your point, some of them may have all this taxes oh, out, but they're low they but they're low value yeah, properties. Yeah, so then the question is is what's what's the best practice? Is there something available from the state that's an option for us with the low value properties? You know, what's what's the best practice? There's gotta be something out there, information related to that topic. Well, and, and flip it around from low value to high value. value right. we, we put a plan together of those couple of exactly. high value, we, and we're chasing it, right. and exactly. we're wrong. Right. So if there are other additional, there may be some stuff in the middle that that's worth pursuing, but yeah. might need a little extra work. Push. Yeah. So if we could have that, that yeah. would be great. Okay. A lot of the properties, like when Brenda and I look through the list, a lot of your property just overwhelming. Oh, you well, and, and we're on to the next three properties as far as the teardown. And I had a conversation today to give Kathy uh, an estimate. Kathy asked Cindy for an estimate mm -hmm. to do the campground, to finish the campground. And so that we're on to that would be the next project to, to go forward with. Yep. And then, you know, when you went in there today, I did check it. Then, no. And then Kathy had there. another question the other day, um, and it was from um, she went to the CIP meeting, and um, Mr. O'Connell had said something to her to the effect that um, he didn't want uh, her pursuing in anything over ten thousand dollars. He wanted she got, she got permission from That's that. What she said. Oh uh, well, I think we need to. And I said, I don't, I, and he said that the selectman had said something. He said the selectman agreed that, and she I don't, wouldn't apply for anything. No, I, did, I didn't remember anything. Over approved by the It office. wasn't approved, it was notifying. She said the, the, I, well, I understand that, but the discussion was that we would notify them if our capital plan was changing and, and that it should reflect pursuing the grant. So so it's it's supposed to be a notification that, hey, we're pursuing this. If it's approved, we're going to be yeah. going to pursue it. Yeah. We can find big chunks of money. We're going right. to find big chunks of money. Now, perhaps I'm misunderstanding it, but I, I, that's the way I remember. And, and it was like a while back that that had been discussed. Now, if that. Yeah, did we have discussed it? Or I think we discussed well, it at Peter one of our here, meetings. So. Peter was here. And, and we said absolutely from a standpoint of the, there had been some misses in communication where we had sure. decided to go after some grants and had not communicated it to the CIPC. But I don't recall that discussion saying that they needed to approve it before yeah, it went forward because there are times when that stuff is very time yeah, sensitive. That's what Kathy had said. 
said that's what so is. so I said I would bring that up. yeah so so we probably need to send a formal communication to Peter saying that you know our recollection of that was that we would send notifications if we were yeah. applying for anything that would be over ten thousand dollars but not that and, and, and it's more for incorporation in the plan. It's one of his concerns that he's voiced many times is that he feels that the selectmen don't um, exert enough like forward pre-planning to the overall well, like, like capital plan of the town. Okay. Um, and, and sometimes it's because of the fact that we just we are looking for these opportunities and we might go after a project that would have been lower priority if we were fully self-funding it, but if there's a grant money opportunity to execute those those projects, we try to do what makes sense, right? So uh, I remember it being a notification, not an approval, and, and I think that's a message we should send cl clearly to both Kathy and to the CIPC that, hey, there are gonna be times where we might change the plan because something comes available that wasn't part of our like decision-making process for the, for the capital plan. So I'll try to make it to the next meeting. Well, that'd be great. So if, if you all concur with that, I'll, I'll try to make it to the next one. So I think we've got a perfect example in front of us. Right. We have open space. We spent two years doing a bunch of stuff. One of the things that was listed as one of the high priorities was Lewis Field and Rec. Yep. And, and what can we do? Flip it around. Uh, Kathy's gone off. She's found money. They call it park money. It's 70 percent state money is 30 percent town money we now have this uh, payback of monies that uh, from uh, what am I trying to say the uh, the idea of someone taking money out of chapter or taking land out of chapter uh, yes, chapter, chapter land, land. And, and now we've got some money so now we have a, we have a pocket of, we have a pocket of money there that's available we have a playground that needs to be ADA compliant. We're dealing with something that's, like, the last number I understood was about $80,000 of all-in costs to get a brand new playground. And Kathy's pursuing that. And uh, I, would, I would think that, again, we were all kind of all on the same page, that yep. that was the priority, that's what, that was the approach, and yep. that's what we're doing. Yeah. So again, if there's some misunderstanding, let's get it in front of everybody yes. now. Yeah, because I think having a, having a brand new playground that's ADA compliant is probably an important thing that we should consider. Yeah, I would agree. I agree. So I think I think it may just be you know a context issue. Sure. So. Okay. Well, anything else under other before we move on to correspondence? I have nothing. Okay. okay, this is something else again from chat. Uh, on August 21st, the, the EVINE channel located on Spectrum Basic Channel TV will be rebanded to Shop HQ on the channel lineup for the air community. If you have any questions, you can uh, reach John Maha at john.maha at charter.com. This is the yeah, this from KP Law. It's a, it's a notice of a rate increase and it's, uh, as of August 1st. Uh, the monthly uh, rate will be going from 175 to 185 with paralegals at one half the amount. And this is the first time they have gone up in 10 years. I wonder if this would be the proper time I could bring this up. Um, I don't know if we should do this for another year, but uh, it seems, you know, a lot of times when different departments uh, use KPR and they have them come out or something, it has to come out of our legal funds. So I don't know if it's any way that we start the budget. It's also a joke because I have like, I accidentally they get their own bills. So there's a few, so there's a few that don't. Tax, tax collector, they do. Um, mm -hmm. But there are a few other ones that don't get, um, they don't have budgets so that they can take the money out of there so the money comes out of our legal funds. So we are, it's so hard to predict. I mean, that's the thing. That's, it's, I know, it, that's the thing. But maybe what we should do is, is uh, have Again, maybe a procedure or something yeah. that talks about identification, early identification of legal matters, and how we're going to approach it. Maybe that—that's something that. Um, 
Maybe we should. That's that's probably a good project. Mm -hmm. Instead of there's a lot of times you know when we go to town meeting, people see how much it costs for the legal fees, and they don't just don't understand that this is other departments that are using you know our legal funds. Well, I mean, do we have a good analysis or a breakout of really what the funds have been spent on? Because I don't think. Michelle, typically, we've seen it. I think it's years ago. Yeah, Michelle gets the right term for a second. Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, 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 if we go, yeah, I don't have it in front of me either, but. Maybe it's it, time for an update. Well, I was going to say, I don't think that the, I don't think that really the, I, I want to say that the, the, Billing for some of those other activities are really pretty nominal. I don't know that it's honestly worth breaking out. I see a lot of times, particularly when you're dealing with budgeting like that, trying to delineate it out to the departments might feel convenient or or feel like it's 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 greater accountability. But really, all it does is it complicates the the billing and the management of the budgets. I mean, and, and it goes to then you have to do transfers of maybe it would have to come out of the selectman's legal fund and go over to highways legal fund. And it just, I think actually it's a level of um, setting up all those separate accounts and then trying to, to say, okay, well, is it the health department that needs to pay that bill or is it, you know, the, the planning well, board? You know, the only question I had on was because, you know, like, like going in before town meeting this year, uh -huh. and they saw the jump in it, and they go, oh, what the jump? And if they think that it's the selectmen using this money, you know, it's a, you know, selectmen's line item, but actually it's not, and the other people use that line item also. So, so maybe what we do is we turn, I, I hear what Beth's saying mm -hmm. as far as the idea to delineate, and I agree with you as far as the, it complicates things. Yeah, right. Flip it around. If we were to have a report from KP mm -hmm. based on the last fiscal year. It goes in the annual of, town of, of, report. That goes in the annual town report or something. Right, this, this, the bucketize is yeah. basically mm -hmm. where the money, where, where the money's that we budgeted total overall, mm -hmm. and then these were the activities, you know, not down to a minute level. No. But like land court versus, it's, it's you exactly. know, HR consulting versus well, like contract budget. reviews, you know, that sort of thing. And right? if, we could, if we could have that kind of break ground and have it at, yeah. at one of our meetings in the fall, just to look at it from that perspective and say, do we want to delineate or not? Probably not. Right. And then flip it around. But this is what we spent it on. We're budgeted for this much. And what we can then do is turn to the departments to say, if you've got anything on the horizon that yeah. looks like it's got to come out of this bucket of money. Yeah. Well, it's just a thought. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's a good yeah. one. Yeah, and absolutely. I think a I think increased transparency would be great. I just think functionally it, it, it's something that I, I would personally not be really excited to do. Yeah. So, that's it, I guess. So we, if that were it, I'd say motion to adjourn. At seven o'clock. Aye. 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 Aye